Welcome to the reading of the Sabbath School lesson for the second quarter of 2022. Welcome to lesson number five in the series on Genesis. It's titled All Nations and Babel and it's ready for teaching on April 30 and I'm Percy Harold. Friday, April 29. They decided to build a city and in it a tower of such stupendous height. We read in Patriarchs and Prophets, pages 118 to 119. We continue. These enterprises were designed to prevent the people from scattering abroad in colonies. God had directed men to disperse throughout the earth, to replenish and subdue it. But these Babel builders determined to keep their community united in one body and to found a monarchy that should eventually embrace the whole earth. Thus, their city would become the metropolis of a universal empire. Its glory would command the admiration and homage of the world and render the founders illustrious. The magnificent tower, reaching to the heavens, was intended to stand as a monument of the power and wisdom of its builders, perpetuating their fame to the latest generations. The dwellers on the plain of Shinar disbelieved God's covenant that he would not again bring a flood upon the earth. Many of them denied the existence of God and attributed the flood to the operation of natural causes. Others believed in a supreme being and that it was he who had destroyed the antediluvian world and their hearts, like that of Cain, rose up in rebellion against him. One object before them in the erection of the tower was to secure their own safety in case of another deluge. By carrying the structure to such a greater height than was reached by the waters of the flood, they thought to place themselves beyond all possibility of danger, and, as they would be able to ascend to the region of the clouds, they hoped to ascertain the cause of the flood. The whole undertaking was designed to exalt still further the pride of its projectors and to turn the minds of future generations away from God and lead them into idolatry. End of quote. And that brings us to our two discussion questions for this week. One, what example do we have from history, or even the present, of the trouble that can come from those who seek to make a name for themselves? Two, How can we as a church avoid the danger of seeking to build our own Tower of Babel? What are ways we might actually be seeking to do this, even subconsciously? Inside Story Our mission story this week is titled Miracle in UAE, and it's by Guerino Lacuaro. Pradeep Leonaj hadn't really thought about Jesus until his son joined a Pathfinder club in the United Arab Emirates. The 13-year-old boy came home filled with joy about the Bible stories that he heard in the club. As Prandeep and his wife saw the boy's enthusiasm and listened to the stories, a desire grew in them to know more, and they started to study the Bible with Muyi Oyinloi, pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Sharjah. The day came when Pradeep's wife and son gave their hearts to Jesus and were baptised. Pradeep also wanted to join the Adventist church, but he had a sinful habit that he seemed powerless to break. Tobacco. Around the time of the baptisms, a new health ministries director was settling into her job at the headquarters of the Gulf Field of the Middle East and North African Union Mission. As Cathy Coleman examined her new office, she realised that she was lacking the Health Ministry's official stamp, which was vital for documents. A call to the former Health Ministry's director yielded both the stamp and several boxes of materials that she had known nothing about. The boxes contained various Adventist health programmes, including Breathe Free, a smoking cessation programme. While sorting out the materials, Cathy received a call from Pastor Mui. Could you arrange the stop smoking program for Pradeep? he asked. Cathy realised that God had provided everything that she needed to help the man. God had put all the pieces together just in time for the pastor's phone call. Cathy got in touch with Pradeep and helped him through the nine week program. He stopped smoking and, two months after completing the program, remained smoke-free 
and without cravings. With joy, he was baptised on Sabbath, March 13, 2021. The Lord has been blessing me both physically and spiritually in my life, he said. He has improved my health, my family is happier, and even at work I'm performing better. Now the 47-year-old man is telling everyone about Jesus and inviting them to experience his joy. Through his testimony about how he quit smoking, three new families have sent their children to the Pathfinder Club. Jesus is inviting every one of his followers to shine brightly for him, said Mark Coleman, president of the Gulf Field. The Lord is calling all of us to live a transformed life that will let others know of the love of Jesus in us, he said. This mission story illustrates mission objective number two of the Seventh-day Adventist Church's I Will Go strategic plan to strengthen and diversify Adventist outreach across the 1040 window. Read more at IWillGo2020.org. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind. Sponsored by the Sabbath School Department and distributed through Hope Channel Australia, this podcast is also redistributed by Hope Channel Germany, Christian Record Services for the Blind, and It Is Written. It is also available on SoundCloud and through multiple podcast distributors, including Apple iTunes. Remember, God is always faithful.